So this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of Linux distribution. Today I want to talk about Parapesis because I just discovered this in the last couple of days. I was scouring DistroWatch for something and I noticed this distribution, Parapesis, and I never heard about it, but it ranks rather high in the DistroWatch rankings. It is actually in their top 100 and it's odd seeing a distribution in their top 100 page hit rankings that I've never heard about. So what is Parapesis? Well, it's a small scale, minimalist, command line based Linux operating system. It's an incomplete system, but it's constantly being improved. So what this is, it's a live USB is essentially what it's going to be. You download an ISO, you burn it to a live USB, and you've got a very stripped down Linux operating system on a USB. And when I say stripped down, the entire ISO is 193 megabytes. So there is no graphical programs on this at all. It is entirely the command line. So you're not getting XOR and Wayland. There's not a package manager built into this thing either. All you get is what is actually on this 193 megabyte image, which is essentially the Bash shell, the GNU core utils, and a few other extra nice to help you live in this USB stick if you need to. For example, it's going to have the Lynx web browser, which is a terminal-based web browser. I think it's got a terminal-based uh, email client built into it as well, and, and some other things. If I click on the user manual here, I will say their uh, documentation here, their user manual, is actually really nice. It covers everything from burning the image to a USB, which I shouldn't need to cover, but they tell you how to do it with the DD command if you want to do it through the command line with DD. But you can use a program like Etcher on Linux or Rufus on Windows to burn the ISO to a USB stick. But most of the user guide is just how to do stuff at the command line. For example, how to set a root password if you need to, because by default the root user is not going to have a password set. You can do anything as the root user in Parapesis, but for the most part, it's just your basic command line commands. It covers a lot of like basic shell commands, of the kind of commands that I spend a lot of time talking about on my YouTube channel, right? We've covered a lot of the standard GNU core utils, and their user manual is essentially how to use a lot of that stuff. So it's kind of neat. It's a really educational kind of Linux distribution because to get around in this thing, you're really going to have to learn how to use some of the basic shell utilities. So let me switch over to this virtual machine that's just booting off the ISO directly. There's no hard drive, no storage attached. This is essentially the exact same thing as running a live USB. And when you first load up Parapesis, it boots up automatically into this TTY login. And you, there's only one user on the system. It is root. And root doesn't have a password set by default. So it automatically logs you in. So some of the first things you'd probably want to do, especially if you were doing this on a USB stick that you, know, you could write stuff to. First of all, let's verify that we're actually using bash. So it looks like the root user's default shell is slash bin slash sh, which is just a sim link to whatever the uh, default system shell is. But I'm assuming if I did a where is bash, of course, slash bin slash bash does exist on the system. If you wanted to do any kind of customization with the bash shell, let's see if they include any kind of bash RC. So is there a bash configuration file for the root user? Because we're logged in as root, right now we're in the slash root directory because that is the root user's home directory. And you can see there's no dot bash RC for the root user. We could create one, but I'm not gonna do that. And here in my virtual machine, I don't have storage attached, so it wouldn't be saved permanently Anyway, I did a uname dash r. What is the kernel we're on? 6.0.2. That's not a terribly old kernel, so that's good. If I do a uname dash a, let's see all of the information. So Linux, of course, is the kernel. Parapesis, it's the name of the distribution. Obviously, GNU slash Linux is the name of the operating system in the kernel 6.0.2. If you wanted to read some documentation, you could use the Lynx browser. So if I do Lynx and then a URL such as peropesis.org, it will take us to that website. And I just use the arrow keys to go down. And if I find a link that I want to read, for example, new chapter, the screen manager. So this is about GNU screen, which is kind of like a terminal multiplexer. I don't know how to use it, but apparently they have it installed and they have some documentation about that. If I wanted to read about it, I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard to quit. Do you really want to exit links? Yes. 
And I'm back here at the command line. Let me clear the screen to get that cursor back at the top of the screen. And really just reading some of the documentation, this is really, again, it's kind of an educational kind of project. You can see I'm actually going through their user documentation. For example, editing command line. So it tells you that by default, the Bash Shield uses Emacs style key bindings to navigate. If you wanted to set it to using VI style key bindings, it gives you the command to switch over to the VI bindings. Although interesting, VI is not installed, which is really weird because VI is kind of the text editor on Unix-like operating systems. It's almost always there. And it's unusual to find a Unix-like operating system that doesn't have VI installed. And if you're asking about Vim, Vim is definitely not installed. So what is our text editor? Well, reading their manual, ed is the text editor. There's actually two, but ed is one of their text editors. Uh, I did a video about the basics of how to edit a file in ed it's complicated it's not something you probably really want to look into colon q i believe quits out of it similar to vim or actually i guess just q yeah and so no colon is needed the only other editor here is nano and honestly i think parapesis i, I love the whole idea of, of a very minimal command line only kind of operating system but you've got to have better text editors because you're going to do so much with scripting. You're going to have to create some scripts to, to make life work in this operating system. And most Linux users are not, nobody's going to use Ed. Let's just be real. Nobody is going to use Ed as a text editor. And most of the kinds of people that would use this kind of operating system are probably not going to be happy with Nano either. VI at least needs to be installed, if not vim uh, vim would be a better option but if they're trying to keep the operating system super small at, at least give us vi and if you want to uninstall nano or ed that would be all right too but i would say you, you know keep nano i guess for the nano users but you know you gotta have vi and looking at some of their documentation they again we were on a page a minute ago about screen it looks like screen dash capital s and then i could give it some name would create another screen another monitor with a different prompt and if i do control d to detach i'm back to essentially the screen that i was on before by the way if i do a that ls again ls la here uh, dot mail rc you're probably wondering what that is so there is a program that they have installed called uh, snail i guess it's some kind of mail client i don't have any idea how to use it there is documentation but if you wanted to i mean i guess i could take a look at the configuration file for one thing i would never set this up on camera anyway because obviously i would have to enter uh, some personal information as far as uh, emails and accounts and things like that so i'm not going to get that working on this video but for those of you that need access to email from a essentially a tty only operating system that is possible and of course you have the links web browser as well so really you could use this thing for for a lot of things there's really not much you couldn't do in this kind of operating system the only thing you couldn't do is obviously things that have to be graphical so you couldn't watch a video right but you know you couldn't edit a video you couldn't create i guess images you know like you would in gimp or inkscape but beyond that pretty much everything else that you want to do on a computer can be done at the tty uh, going back to the documentation they're really just covering a lot of the standard gnu core utils uh what is apropos man db which is the database of the man pages of course that's one of the most important things every uh, linux user really needs to know about are the man pages it even covers the basic directory structure on linux so you know what is slash bin what is slash boot you know etc it covers some of the more powerful commands such as the find command i've done videos on all of these command line programs uh, lsblk the list block command and uh, mount and unmount and cheroot and yeah so this is really interesting there's some networking stuff here if config and then wpa supplicant it looks like is installed and available to us as well so that's a little bit of what you can do with pair of pieces again it's not much to it because again this image 
193 megabytes, right? <laughs> and that is kind of cool. I, honestly, I wouldn't mind keeping a USB stick around with something like Parapesis on it. Uh, I, I find it a rather interesting project, and I'm going to keep up with it in the future. Right now, according to their website, again, they mentioned that it is a incomplete system. So I'm assuming that you know, in the coming months, if not the coming years, it's going to see a lot more improvement and it's going to become uh, more than it currently is. It looks like it has been around. It has had several releases dating back to at least 2022. If I go to more news, I wonder, wonder what the oldest release is. Early 2021, February 2021. So this project has been around for a little more than two years. And again, ranks kind of high on distro watch but for whatever reason it has flown under my radar right <laughs> i'm just now hearing about it but yeah pretty cool stuff so check that out now before i go i want to thank a few special people i want to thank the producers of this episode and of course i'm talking about gabe james maxim my homies too bald matt mimic mitchell paul Royal west armor dragon bash potato chuck commander angry george lee marshall methos nate Erion, paul peace horse from door polytech realities for less red profit rolling tools devler willie and zinnabit these guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Parapesis would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these lovely, lovely ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Without these guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. If you like my work want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.